Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. It's a great Friday. It's a blessed Friday. Without further delay, let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for... Uh, a blessed day, Lord God. Your your mercies are brand new every morning, Lord God. Every morning that you wake us up, God, it's a, it's another mercy, Lord, because you could have took us out in our sleep, Lord God. You could have took us out yesterday or last week or last month, last year, Lord God. You could have destroyed us, Lord, in the midst of our sin, but you gave us another chance, Lord, to live for you, and I thank you, God. <clears throat> thank you for your love, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that even when we fall short, Father, your love never fails. Your love never falls. Even if we fail and fall, Lord, your love is it still remains, God. And God, although we may um go astray many times, Lord, your arms are always wide open, ready to welcome us back, God. Help all your people to come back to you, God, before the time that they perish, God. Help all your people to repent and to and to to run back to you, God, before they are destroyed by their sins and in the midst of their sins, Lord. Use me as the vessel this morning, God, that you put the word in, and use me as the messenger who delivers that word. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> all right. Today's scripture coming from Romans. Chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, 
you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. God bless the readers, the hearers. and especially the doers of his holy word. <clears throat> Good morning, Sister Kiana. Good morning, Miss Billy. Good morning, Brother Tyrese. I see all y'all on there. <clears throat> all right. I got a lot this morning wrote down here. A text in a text message. Uh, this is a tricky one, though. It says, uh, see, it says, uh, owe no one anything but to love one another. So this is a tricky one because some people do not believe in paying off their debts. Did you hear me? Some people don't pay off their debts. They will owe you and avoid you when it's time to pay you. You get what I'm saying? So this is a tricky one when you say owe nobody, owe them love. <laughs> owe them love and uh, if you owe them, you're going to pay them. But some people don't believe in paying off they did. Don't and 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 we're gonna get you don't owe them because of because of them now. I'm, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I'm gonna get to that in a little bit here. But follow me here. <clears throat> They'll owe you and and avoid you when it's time to pay you. But what if we all paid each other with the love that Christ commands us in John 13, 34? Uh right here, Paul is saying to the to the Romans, uh owe no one anything but to love one another. But Jesus, you know, he already declared it in John 13, 34. He says, I give to you today a new commandment that you love one another. He said, just as I have loved you, you also must love each other. That's what Jesus said there in John 13, 34. So if Jesus says to do it, then it's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. See, if Jesus gives it, if Jesus tells you to do something, it's a command. Because he's the master, and um, I have this same uh, mindset when um, uh, when I when I when I uh when I go to God and I promise God something, I promise God I'm gonna do something or, or tell God or or, or or tell God, hey, I'm gonna do this, or what have you, and then he said, yeah, and then he be telling me, yeah, okay, well, do it. The minute he says do it, it's no longer my option on if I want to do it or not. You can make all the promises to God that you want to. You can make all the oaths and swear to God all you want to that you're going to do something. That's your prerogative. I mean, if that's what you want to do. Jesus said, don't make no oaths. Don't swear. Don't do any of that stuff. But if you choose to do that and you don't hold up to it, you just broke an oath, but you just you just swear something that you couldn't do or, or not or didn't do. But the minute that he says, okay, do it, it's a commandment from that point. So in G when Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, love, love him, love her, uh, it's not negotiable. Uh, if he said it, we have to do it. Now, listen, we love them because we owe, we, listen, we love them because Jesus said it, not because they deserve it. Somebody might not want to hear that, but that's the truth. I don't deserve your love. You owe me love because Jesus told you to do it. You don't deserve my love. You, I owe you, I, I owe you love because Jesus told me to do it because it's a commandment. You haven't earned my, you know, it, it, it's not based on who has earned your love, who has earned the right for you to love them or earned the, the entitlement for you to love them. It's based on Jesus Christ said to love them. He says it's, he said it, you got to do it. Like I said, if he said you got to do it, listen, <clears throat> we don't, it's not because they deserve it. And also we owe it to them because we owe him. That's why we, see, that's another reason. We owe them love because Jesus Christ says to love them. And we owe them love because we owe him, the one who paid for us, the one who bought us with his life, Jesus Christ. He paid for us with him. So therefore, our actions and our words toward others should not be harmful. But, that's a but, 
Our actions and words toward other people should not be harmful, but they should be truthful and biblical. I know you know where I'm going with this too. Most of us know that the truth hurts, but the truth helps us more than it harms us. Now, I guess the word hurt and harm are interchangeable, and I use them kind of, <clears throat> kind of, uh, I, I kind of switch them around here. The truth might hurt, the truth might hurt, but it helps more than it harms people. Degrading someone could cause them uh, emotional harm. Degrading someone might harm them emotionally, but telling them about their sin helps them. See, we, uh, we, uh, depriving, so, uh, let me stay right there. Degrading someone, making them, uh, <clears throat> calling them something, calling them something, disrespecting them, dishonoring them is a different thing from telling them, hey man, that ain't what the Bible says, bro. Hey sis, that ain't, you're not supposed to do that because that's wrong. That's not degrading them. Our generation has got to the point where if you, they offended by you telling them something. They mad about you telling them something. And it ain't got to tell them that they are something or telling them their consequences. But we just telling them, hey, the, the Bible don't say do that, bro. The Bible says not to do that, sister. And they, what they call, 38 hot. That's the phrase we was using. 38 hot, hiding up a, a gun that you just shot at. Hot, burning up hot because you told them that they are doing something wrong or that they did something wrong. That ain't hurting them. That's not causing them harm by telling them that they did something wrong. But our generation has got to the point where if you tell them something, and, and I'm sitting there in my head thinking about our generation. I think about my wife and my baby too. My eight-year-old and my uh, my wife, they get mad when you tell them something too. My wife don't want to about telling her nothing. I be having, sometimes I can't, I can't tell her nothing. And the baby, same way, but she might she might be um, picking up that... Um, she might be learning those actions from me and her mother. I don't really, I don't like to be told stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I don't mind being told stuff. You know, I try to be right. I try to be right a lot of time. I want, I want to be right. And that's something I'm praying about. I'm asking God to take away my desire to want to be right all the time. So that's why I try to line my life up with the Bible. So, 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 so if I want to be right about something, I line everything up with the Bible. I say, look, Hey, Hey, I, I'm, don't shoot me. I'm just the messenger. If you want to be right about something, line your life up, line your actions up, line your words up with the Bible, and you're right because the Bible is always right. But I say, Tariah might be learning that from us when we're sitting there going back and forth about uh, uh, um, which ice cream is the best or something. I don't know, man. Uh, how you supposed to make homemade pancakes or something. You know, and, and 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 and, uh, and what I'm saying is, when you're telling people something, they they don't want to hear it, man. You know, and, and if it's a and if it's a, if it's a sinful issue, uh, you're supposed to tell them. The Bible says rebuke. It says exhort also. It says a re but it says to re Paul says to rebuke with all long suffering. That means with patience. So that means you can't get impatient with telling them. You're gonna have to keep telling them and telling them and telling them until it sets in. Some people, our generation, who don't read the Bible, say you're beating them across the head with the Bible. That's not what that means. Paul says rebuke them with all long suffering. That means patiently. Keep on just tell them, tell them, tell them, and don't let your patience wear out. When they went up, other people say don't tell them at all, which is a lie. Degrading someone could harm them emotionally, but telling them about their sin helps them. Depriving someone of something needed for their sin the withholding something from somebody that they need to commit a sin, like uh, they need money to do it, or they, or they need a little, they need, man, give me five dollars, man, I'm trying to do something. And you know they finna do, they finna buy them a hit, or get them a bump, or get them a little bottle look and a cigar so they can roll up one, and you depriving them of something. <laughs> that might hurt them, and they mind, and they need hard, but you're helping them in the long run. Man, give me a ride over here to, to the other side of town, man, I gotta go pick up something. Bro, I know you're going to buy you a powder bag or a rock or or, or or dime rock. So I ain't taking you over there. And somebody might look at it like, man, you made him walk, you made him walk 45 minutes over there. Now he walked, now his habit made him walk 45 minutes. Or the enemy, Satan tricked him to walk 45 minutes over there to buy a dime rock or to buy a powder bag or to buy a, a bottle of vodka. The devil tricked him to do that. 
I didn't make them do it. I just didn't help them commit a sin. So depriving someone of something that they need to commit a sin is not harming them. If they let that addiction of sin harm them, and I, these are only two examples I put down. I can put so many examples of when you when you withhold something from somebody that they that that is going to harm them. You're not harming them. In fact, you're loving them. You, by you not helping them to sin, you are loving them. By you not uh, uh, encouraging them to sin, that shows that you love them because you know what the consequences of sin consist of. You know what happens when we live a life of sin and don't turn our life over to Jesus. You know that, well, a lot of people don't know this one here, but I do know. I know that being under the influence of drugs or alcohol or any other type of chemical or something, it can hinder your walk with the Lord. It can cause you to not believe. Man, you can be, if you if you high all the time, if you under the influence of something, man, your mind can't focus on Jesus. You don't think about praying because you think about getting that hit. You think about getting high. I know I'm using drugs because I got a lot of people. They, they, I got people that love Jesus. I got people that get high and love Jesus. It's what they tell me now. But it comes to a point. But I also have at least maybe one the drugs have taken them so far that you can't see their love for Jesus. And so sin can take a person so far that, they, that they're that they too far from Jesus. Not where he can't reach them, but they're too far from Jesus to see Jesus. So they don't know where to turn. They don't know where to go. They, they walk around, they turn around looking for Jesus. They can't see Jesus. Their eyes are covered. He might be standing right there, one foot step away. But they can't see him though. And so depriving someone of, of something that causes them to sin is showing that you love them because if you don't deprive them of that thing that causes them to sin, you show you 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 can't care for them. You're gonna let them continue to walk away from the Lord Jesus. If you're gonna let them continue to cover their eyes with with a veil or with something that's stopping them from seeing Jesus, you're gonna continue to let them plug their ears up so they can't hear the Lord Jesus talking. Don't get it twisted now. When you uh when you when you stopping somebody from sinning or depriving somebody of their sin or encouraging somebody not to sin, you it ain't hate. It ain't bigotry. It's love. It's love. Uh, <clears throat> many people confuse harming someone with offending them. Many people think that offending, I was just talking about uh, my, my wife and my daughter now, offending them is not harming them. I know a lot of times, I'm, I'm you try, for example. She be wrong about something. Uh, she be oh yeah, she's doing her Bible stuff. So uh, she got a class that she's doing. I'm teaching her some stuff, and I and she said, "Dad, it's not there." And I said, "It is." She read right past. I said, "Hold on, stop. Just read that one verse, and the answer is in the first verse that you read." And she read and stop reading, run the back right the answer back. I said, "See, I said you're doing it too fast. You move, but she be no, I'm not. No, I said yes, you are. No, she can always know. Then won't cry." Want to start crying and stuff when 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 you get a feeling hurt. When I'm telling her to slow down or in a reading or, or when I'm telling her, you know, I'm just telling her to do stuff that'll help her. And it might be offensive to her. It might even make her feel sad or make her feel bad. But I'm not harming her. I'm not hurting her. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm trying to teach her, trying to help her, trying to show her that I love her. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times the things we do might offend some people because um because we have a different standard. We have a different standard in them, and I ain't talking about I ain't talking about small things. I'm talking about I'm talking about sinful things. I'm talking about when we tell people about sin, when we lead when we lead people down a path that that doesn't consist of sin, it might offend them. But we're confusing. Some people have confused offense with harm, and they're not the same. Offending someone might might get they might get up in their feelings, but it's not harming them. It's not hurting them. If you love them, you hear me. If you love them. Tell them the truth. It might offend them, but it will not harm them. Now, listen to this. I'm going to let you go. I'm over my time. Um, think about this. If you were walking into a deep pit or walking off the edge of a steep mountain, do you want someone to warn you? Think about that. See, I, I, I almost skipped out this part right here that Paul says. And 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 and, and it's, it's mentioned many times. Do them as you want. Treat them as you want to be treated. Do unto them as you want them to do unto you. If if uh, if you about to walk off the end of a cliff, a deep 
a steep, a high mountain, or you're about to walk into a deep pit. Four, five stories deep. Do you want somebody to warn you, or do you want to keep on going? You want them to look at you and watch you walk, watch you, watch you walk and fall down to your death? Is that what you want them to do? Be real with yourself. Do you want somebody to watch you uh, while you ain't got your head down on your phone, walking into the road, an uh, 18 wheeler coming, a uh, big semi truck coming, you walking with your head down, looking in your phone, walking straight in front of the truck? Do you want them to say, hey, man, the truck's coming or grab you or pull you back or something? Or do you want them to just watch you as you walk out there and get crushed and ran over by a truck? That's how you need to look at love. <clears throat> if you know that what they're doing is going to lead them to destruction, you need to tell them, no, don't do it, bro. No, sis, come on. Let's not go that route. Their route leads to destruction. Now, that's only if you believe it. You have to believe. In order for you to minister to somebody, in order for you to tell somebody that you love them and bring them away from sin, you have to believe that sin leads to destruction yourself. <clears throat> if you think that sin doesn't have consequences, you won't be able to tell anybody else to leave their sin. If you think if you don't if you think that sin is okay with God and that He's not going to punish sin or destroy sin, then you won't be able to draw somebody else away from sin. <clears throat> if you want somebody to warn you when you're getting ready to uh, walk into destruction or walk into death, you ought to treat others the same way. That's showing that you love them by telling them what the Bible says, by telling them the truth, but at the same time leveling with them to a point where they will listen and they understand that you're not trying to hurt them but you're just showing that you love them amen thank you lord for your word this morning god i thank you god god i feel like there's so much i want to say about this lord but i do feel like i may be repeating the same things god so i think lord uh if, if lord if your people if it's some of your people have have not heard from me, Lord. I pray that you would give it to them later, Lord. God, if it's something that you didn't want them to hear, Lord God, I pray that you would remove it, God, that um, that it, that it won't be heard of them, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would uh, guide us on this day, Lord. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Father God. In the name of Jesus, protect us, Lord. Keep us safe, God. Uh, help us to walk according to your will, God. We all want you to tell us we are done by good and faithful serving, God. We really do, God. But there are some things that are that are not so black and white. There are some things that are not so clear, Lord. And God, I ask for wisdom, God, and I ask for understanding and discernment, God, that we may be able to to know what your will is, God, and that we may be able to walk in your will, Lord, and that we may be able, that we may be able to help others and lead others and encourage others to do your will, God, whatever that may be, God. We give you praise, Lord God. We give you honor, Lord God, and we give you glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Oh, I feel like I got so much. Out. That's it for morning cup of Jesus. If the Lord is willing, we're going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you.